if you are killing um, merely to eat, it is totally selfish okay. because the creature feels pain, the creature also tries to run away from being killed and uh, um, if you force it to kill just merely to satisfy your tongue that is that is not a good thing this will take me to something that has uh, happened in the past how people uh, got to study what we call now Kung Fu. Most of the time, if you watch the original Kung Fu, they have some prayerful mood when they are entering the fight. It is not a fight actually for defending because they don't have any intention of killing anybody. It is the Western world learning that thing that uh, they didn't get that secret. So they think uh, they have been using it to attack. They use it to kill. Okay. You see? But the original Kung Fu was not for killing. Right, hi, welcome to another exciting edition of John Cosmic Foundation. And this is question time. Uh, we are here to answer your questions you've sent in. Uh, so please, send yours down in the comment section below and most importantly we advise that you subscribe to our channel so that every week you'll get our notification and watch our videos my name is Kogun Kumi I'm right here with Dr. Bafujan and he's a spiritual teacher he virtually knows everything and he will answer your questions for you good evening doctor good evening we always thank you for your time and uh, today we have another set of questions. Okay. Uh, if you could help us answer some of them. Okay. All right. So the first one um, says, Hello, doctor. Uh, from your teachings, killing insects has become a problem for me. Uh, so that is the first question. It's from um, one of our topics we discussed, um, why Africa is poor. Mm -hmm. And I think you made an analogy that uh, we should protect and care for animals rather than killing them. And this person is asking, um, he's not even interested in killing insects <laughs> <laughs> because of uh, the teachings. Mm -hmm. What do you make of this question? Okay. Yes. See, when killing comes, what goes on in the mind, that is what matters. If you are killing um, merely to eat, it is totally selfish okay. because the creature feels pain, the creature also tries to run away from being killed. And uh, um, if you force it to kill, just merely to satisfy your tongue, that is, that is not a good thing. The laws of the universe. So what goes on in the mind when killing comes, that is where the problem is. For example, even as I'm rendering service, uh, speaking to you, the heat from my mouth can kill uh, certain gems. But I'm rendering service, that is my mind. And uh, no intention to kill. As I was walking here, certain Ants and other little, little creatures crossing my way. I'm focused on service. And they get killed. 
the universe knows, and even they get blessed in the sense that um, evolution, and they have a touch of someone doing service on a higher level than them. So for that matter, they evolve. But it's unintentional, I'm just doing my service. So what goes on in the mind is uh, very important in this matter of killing. If there is a mosquito, sometimes the mosquito may bite you. You may be focused doing some service and there is this automatic thing that happens, you do this and you see you've killed a mosquito. Well, no intention to kill the mosquito. You're not looking for it to eat. Nothing in your mind about killing, but it has to be killed. In the process, uh, it gets killed because uh, it came to bite you and uh, automatic reaction. See, uh, sometimes when people kill, they may be, uh, I mean, judged. And the judge may look at it this way. Oh, there is something they call manslaughter. Manslaughter, that means unintentional. Okay. In other words, it's like the mind is not even about killing, but it happened. See, but when the mind is focused on killing, and we must also know the purpose, if even the mind goes to kill, one has to know what purpose is behind it. Is it to satisfy some selfish something? And uh, um, this will take me to something that has uh, happened in the past. Um, how people uh, got to study what we call now Kung Fu. The Kung Fu, it was the Buddhist monks. Other people were attacking them in their monastery. And their teachers, their masters, had taught them to be non-violent. One of the principal principles they follow is non-violence. And uh, now people were attacking them in their monastery. Non-violent persons. And they were killing them. See, certain other religious groups trying to establish themselves by force in the zone of the Buddhists. So they were killing these monks taking them out of the monastery so that they will use it for their own um, religious <laughs> um, center. And uh, something happened. These uh, uh, monks reported to their spiritual master. And then the spiritual master was saying, oh, um, the principle we've taught you, non-violence, remains the same, but we'll find solution. So the master will go into meditation, connecting with the inner spirit, the spirit, the essence, the self within, the supreme, the great spirit. And that connection gives the answers. And the answer, the answers that came was this, that uh, as you practice nonviolence, uh, 
the only thing you can do is self-defense. Self-defense, there is no attacking inside it. Okay. You are being attacked, and then you defend. Yes, but someone says the best way to attack is to defend yourself is to attack. No, that is worldly um, uh, philosophy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you see, okay. now, that one will bring a vicious cycle. Okay. But okay, let's uh, see this but one. But you just have to defend yourself. Yes. That is what you are yes. talking about. So uh, the master will get a vision of a particular animal defending itself when it's being attacked. And the ways and means the animal uh, defends itself, the master noted it very well. Then he came to teach the monks. Then different animals, when they are attacked, how they defend themselves. Then he started teaching, these masters started teaching the monks, their disciples. And this uh, became the subject of Kung Fu. Now, they taught them, if the person is stubborn, that is, you defend, but is uh, aiming at killing you, the, the disciples ask their master, so now what f should we do? You say we shouldn't attack, we should only defend. And then the uh, master will explain like this, that um, I'm giving you some techniques so that if uh, the attacker, you defend yourself and it's, uh, that uh, person is very stubborn, is intent on killing you, there is, or let me say, there are certain places you can hit, not with the intention of killing, but making the person unconscious for about 30 minutes. There is some place you hit and the person will be unconscious for about five minutes. So the master taught the disciples these things in the Kung Fu. And uh, now they were being attacked again sometimes and they applied these techniques. Then they had a report to the master again, that uh, there are some people, you hit them, they go unconscious for 30 minutes, they get up and they run away. But there are some stubborn ones. After 30 minutes, he gets up and he's coming on you again. <laughs> <laughs> he's coming on you again. Uh, he, he gathers renewed strength and he's determined to kill you. Then the master said, well, under that circumstance, uh, there is, if the person is still intent to kill you, there is a place you hit and he dies. He or she dies. Um, but, there is this word, but. When that person is behaving that way, make an inner connection, inner prayer. It is not my intention to kill you. Okay. But somehow, you want to kill me, and uh, I have no choice. And he calls upon the master in prayer within. Most of the time, if you watch the original Kung Fu, they have some prayerful mood when they are entering the fight. It is not a fight actually for defending because they don't have any intention of killing anybody. It is the Western world learning that thing that uh, they didn't get that secret. So they think uh, they have been using it to attack. They use it to kill. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. You see, okay. but the original kung fu was not for killing. So what goes on on your mind, even if you have to kill, what goes on in your mind? That's the most important. Thing. Very important. Mm. You see, the Muslims, um, they've been taught, when you are going to kill, pray first. Don't just kill and eat, satisfy your tongue. And uh, if you want to know, you find out what words do they use for their prayer? What do they say? You say, um, say, I didn't create you. I have no right to kill you. Mm. You have your life. I have my life. I have to live my life. You have to live your life. But somehow, now, so the prayer is said that sometimes one is even praying for the spirit behind that animal, that, uh, that is the soul of the animal, that you get elevated in this process. That means something for you also. It's not just all for me, nothing for you, no. You see, so uh, even to kill, you see, when people have no way, they still have to kill. There are rules. There are rules. You go to uh, the Old Testament, when uh, it is said that God uh, gave what you be eating. Mm -hmm. He didn't say, uh, kill the animals and eat. Mm -hmm. He said, the herbs, the fruits, the vegetables, vegetables nuts and seeds. let them be your meat. Let them be your food. Now, when later humans couldn't follow it, then the instruction came that even whilst you are taking the meat, you are not asked to take it, but you are taking it. But even among the meat, among the animals, some are more toxic than others. So depending on how their feet functions, how they eat, how they chew, and keep things in their mouth. It, it is explained there very well that some creatures, um, they, they, they are really like poisonous to your system. And the others which are not poisonous to your system are not medicinal or good for you. The only thing is, they are not poisoning you, but they are not also building you up. They are not helping you. So that, those ones can be said to be like neutral. But the killing process, even the neutral to your system, the killing process makes it negative. And uh, most of the time, you can see from the ancient system, when they will kill, um, they will drain out the blood. Not, yeah. And it's in the Old Testament that uh, the blood, the priests makes them drain off the blood. Why? Because that is the carrier of life oh, force. Okay. And they don't want you to take that into you. Because the career of life must be respected and uh, the, the energy, the power all inside you is more charged and transmitted through the blood. So they drain it off and the chaff, <laughs> mm -hmm. the remaining chaff uh, is offered for them to eat. Okay. You see. But if it is your normal diet, no instructions like this. But when it is not your normal diet, a lot of instructions. 
No, no Muslim will be going to eat vegetables and has to go and <laughs> pray over it and offer it to God before. No, 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 no. That's it's the, the animals, they know yes. there is a reaction to it. Okay. So they have to <laughs> clear their reaction and they pray. They, they call it jifa. They will not, they will not eat anything okay. which has <laughs> not, <laughs> not been prayed over. Mm. You see? So that's why Muslims usually don't eat meat killed by other people. Yes. Uh, okay. Yes. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Jan. I know um, it's intentions you are talking about. Yes. If it's for service, then there is nothing wrong with it. But yeah. if you are killing for your selfish interest, I think really, yes. Yes. Uh, you have to be a little bit cautious about that. Yeah.